I rise in support of LB16. This is an important measure that has been worked on in our Government, Military, and Veterans Affairs Committee. Since my time here, I know that Senator McAllister did a lot of work on it before um, it was picked up by Senator Breezy, who's now our State Treasurer, and I'm grateful to my colleague and friend, Senator Conrad, for taking over the helm and, um, you know, ushering this onto a place on the floor where it can be successful. The bill contained within AM 2229 is, has been a labor of love for me for the last four years. And I'm so grateful to other stakeholders and other people who um, took the time to understand the issue and had compassion and understanding for the economic development and growth that that's gonna bring to our state for interior designers, for the construction fields, and that entire trade and industry. Um, by bringing Nebraska up to a level where we can be more competitive with other states. It fits perfectly with LB16 to attract our workforce and retain our talent and make sure that when people come to Nebraska, they see it as a place where they can really put down roots and not just start a family, get a great education, have a great home, but have a great job. And that's something I know is a goal all of us really share. Um, Senator Geist, when she was here, worked on this quite a bit. Senator Brewer and members of the committee were able to get it done. And the bill contained within this amendment is a long overdue piece of legislation for the design and construction industry in Nebraska. I'm really excited about this bill because it's going to bring more choice to consumers. It's going to bring more economic mobility and opportunity for the many, many small business owners and interior designers across the state. Most of these firms, of course, are women-owned. And um, let's see, I, I'm sure that this number isn't right anymore, but at the time when I was doing my research on this bill, most recently last year, there were 313 des interior design firms across the state. And 300 of them, 96%, are solo practitioners or they have fewer than five employees. And nearly 90% of interior designers in Nebraska are women. So these are entrepreneurs who are running small businesses who are really going to benefit from this amendment. And it's going to keep them in our state. We heard consistently in testimony on this bill over the last four years, that we have interior designers who are getting a world-class education at the University of Nebraska, who are going through the program in Lincoln, and who then find themselves working basically as second-class citizens in their own field that they have you know, a world-class education and experience around, and they have to end up going to another state to fully practice in their field. They are not second-class professionals. They should not be forced through these bureaucratic unnecessary hoops, and the current system that we have doesn't work to anyone's advantage. When I talk about interior design, this is not the profession that you might see portrayed on TV. It's not what you see on HGTV necessarily or whatever, where it's just paint and pillows and aesthetics and things like that. What we're talking about with this amendment, as Senator Brewer, as Chairman Brewer explained during his introduction of this amendment, these are tested, qualified building scientists who are trained to design the work that this amendment describes. And um, they have to qualify for all of these exams. They have to take these exams. It's like an 11-hour nationally recognized comprehensive exam. We know the education that they're getting to receive these credentials in Nebraska is one minute. class. Thank you, Mr. President. And uh, you know, also as Senator Brewer alluded to in his introduction of the amendment, I think everybody's eager to have come to a place of compromise. Um, this has a lot of bipartisan support, and I'm excited to move on and make sure that the interior designers in Nebraska um, are able to get the qualifications and able to get the authority that they need to do their job, just as they can do in any other state. And in doing that, we can grow our workforce here, we can grow Nebraska, we can support independent small business owners, especially women and mothers, and that's something that, you know, is music to my ears and really speaks to my heart. So I urge your green vote on everything up on the board. Thank you, Mr. President.